We've got some fantastic presentations tonight. Everyone excited? Yeah! Come on! Yeah. All right. We've got our smoothie maestro in the back, so anybody who's getting thirsty, that kind of thing. We've got some fantastic food coming, as usual. And um, everyone's got a bingo card, right? Get the $100 bottle of wine winner. Okay. Um, so um, as soon as the presentations are over, we're going to um, announce the, the bingo winners. So everyone's going to get together, um, talk, mingle, that kind of thing. Um, and then right after that, obviously, the food's going to be served. And anyone that goes and plays the virtual other game, it's a really nice custom virtual other game experience tonight. You guys could all try it. <laughs> then you can grab anything off the swag table. You have to play the game, okay? And the first winner is also win a seventy-five dollar bottle of wine. Plus, they get a um, pick of a litter from any of the spon AUG sponsors um, software, server software, unlimited licenses for one year. So it's a must-have do. Good. Good to do it. Big wine drinker over there. She's won a couple. Have you had it? Yes, it was very, very good. Fantastic, nice. right? What? Fantastic, fantastic. Everyone's going to do that. Everyone excited? So, uh, okay, so the first first one up is Joan, uh, Noah Jenkins from Rosetta Stone. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Give it up, give it up. I am a uh, Scrum Master, uh, Program Manager, Project Manager, whatever you want to call it. Um, that, I'm going to talk today a little bit about what happens when people have a lot of freedom uh, in tools like Jira. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a you know problem for administrators. We, I've done some administration. I work with the higher level administrators and I, I, I feel their pain on a daily basis. So um, really what we're talking about is, is um, benefiting from that freedom, um, but giving some guidelines so it doesn't just go crazy. So emergence, uh, I'll just do this quote real quick. In philosophy, systems, theory, science, art, uh, and art, uh, emergence occurs when the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, meaning the whole has properties its parts do not have. That's a Wikipedia entry. Uh, so Wikipedia itself, <laughs> notice I had to put the proper citation here with the time and everything, um, that demonstrates emergence. Uh, happens in SharePoint, happens in Jira, happens in Confluence, ha also happens in a termite mound. In a, in a termite mound, uh, process is action, and action is automatic. They're not having a lot of meetings about this stuff. They don't have an architect. Uh, and it could either be a dream for a project manager, because they just build this thing, or it could be a nightmare, because there's very little communication, and it just happens, and you don't know when it's going to be done, or if it's ever done. Um, there are environmental parameters that, that allow them to create this mound, right? Uh, we've got soil, sand, wood chips, and termite saliva. And if you remove any of those elements, they wouldn't be able to build this thing. Um, gravity, for instance. No gravity, no termite mount. Um, so basically, uh, the correlation here is that we want to provide guidance to the people that are working in these environments so that they are not just creating uh, something that only works for them. We want something that, that works for the organization that, that can be um, interoperable sometimes. Or sometimes we just want them to have freedom and they can just go crazy, and that's fine. So depending on uh, how many guidelines we provide when, during setup, during project setup, or um, even depending on your, your um, organization's uh, method of communication, whether it's safe or you know, scaled agile or <coughs> scrum or any of these other possibilities, um, those guidelines are probably going to come to the users in different ways. Um, uh, in Jira, we, we have a constant proliferation of components at my organization. Uh, components and labels. Labels, um, they're not locked down. There's often typos, and people will make that typo, and it just stays there, right? And you can go back and remove it as many times as you want, and it's going to keep showing back up. So what, <laughs> what we do often, uh, we'll use components instead and say, I see that you made a label. I think it's better if we use a component. But you have to have that conversation, right? Those things have to be spoken to people sometimes. And sometimes in large groups, sometimes in small groups, sometimes you don't want to embarrass the person who did it, but you just want to find ways to, to get this information out there. Um, and this also happens with workflows. People will create a project, if they have access, they'll create a project in Jira and just use whatever workflow they you know, choose, or maybe there's no workflow, and then they want to know why it's broken. Mm -hmm. So we want, to, we want to find ways to, to get people closer together, and sometimes the answer is, is project consolidation. That's not always the answer, but it, it, it often works. More than anything, I want to promote the idea of, of conversation. 
and, and showing people projects that work as examples. And then you can talk about the guidelines. Um, one of the challenges when you have lots of projects is you have to move a ticket. People say, I can't, I can't see this ticket or I can't work on this ticket. That's because it's in the wrong project. Okay, someone has to go and step in and move that ticket over. It takes time, usually it's an administrator. Sometimes there's better things that, that the administrator could be doing than moving tickets around. Um, just these are just challenges in general. I'm sure we can come up with a, a million um, ideas here. Um, hold on one second. Yeah, so what kinds of questions do we ask? Um, do we need separate projects? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It's okay. Um, can we consolidate? And if we can, what's the best example for consolidation? We, we try to find um, you know, reasons. Uh, to, to, we want to show the benefits uh, of having fewer projects. And a lot of them are what I've already talked about. I'm sure you can come up with other examples of your own. Um, but we have to be patient. We have to allow dissent. And we have to explain our perspective, ex explain the perspectives of, of people that have projects that work. Um, and you know, find out why they disagree. Be persistent asynchronously. I find that's the easiest way. Uh, if you can provide a, a, a confluence page, I'm gonna show you what I use. If you can provide a confluence page that shows your progress, uh, it, you'll have a way to communicate with them even when they do disagree because some teams are gonna agree with you. Um, so you're gonna, you're gonna wanna choose a project that has the most consistencies across teams. Um, usually it's a platform, someplace where lots of people are already using the common components that should be used across many teams. You're gonna have teams that are outliers and maybe they don't wanna consolidate and that's perfectly fine, but let's have them focus on what that largest project is because sometimes we're gonna to have to move their tickets into the large project, for instance. Um, uh, using that model, like let's, let's talk about what does work using that model. So if we have this big project and it has lots of components that everyone's using, why does that work? And, and why do these um, other uh, sort of bits that, that have flown in there because people have created labels that they wanted to create on the fly. Uh, why do those exist? But let's talk about that process. Why did that process emerge? Why are, why are people naming uh, things differently? Um, and like I said, show your work. Use, use the page that I'm going to show you. Um, it's a very simple page, but it, it's very effective. Um, and then expect incremental prog progress. You can't do this all overnight. It, sometimes it could take years when you have a really large Jira installation. Um, we don't want it to take years, but it's difficult to have these conversations. People, they have ownership of their projects. They really want to um, control the way those projects are, are handled. And you, you got, you're, you're dealing with people's emotions sometimes because it's their job. Um, and you want to revisit the topic with each team that you talk to. Um, if you have access to one team and they are right on board, that's cool. But there are going to be people, be people who do not necessarily agree. You want to uh, check back in with them once you have some uh, consolidation happening so they can see the benefits. And maybe they'll agree with you. They might not, and that's okay. And then whatever you do during this process, make sure you iterate on it. Um, use examples uh, from what you've done to inform how the good evolves, uh, how the work evolves, both good and bad. We want to make sure that um, we're showing our work. We don't want anyone to think that we are consolidating just for the sake of consolidating. This isn't just busy work. There are actual benefits, and we can talk about why. Ask for feedback. <coughs> find out why someone dis disagrees. Ask, um, accept any new information, and then make it better. So I'm going to just back out here, and we'll go to the actual Confluence page. So it's pretty simple. Um, it's just a components list page. Uh, all I do is I call out each of the teams um, and we talk about which project they're using. This might be multiple projects for multiple teams or it might be one project per team. Um, multiple teams per, per singular project as well. Um, we want to make sure that we're telling them when it was last updated so they can see what, what progress we've made. Um, and then talk about the process. Uh, Basically, in this instance, we have one tech stack. You, may, you probably have many tech stacks. Uh, let's talk about that tech stack, why the components exist in that tech stack. I'm not going to click through here because I'd be showing you Rosetta Stone proprietary <laughs> stuff. But, uh, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. but um, you know, basically, you can make the link right into to all of these uh, um, uh, environments that you need to. So this might point to an ar architecture. An, excuse me, an architecture diagram. It might point to uh, the list of components for that particular project in which that tech stack is represented. Um, and then talk about what the teams have done. In this instance, uh, I, I'm, I'm telling everybody that these two teams have basically competed, completed the work. And therefore, what their lists look like are this. We called out 
the old components, we called out the new components, and we compared them. Each of these links provided a demonstration of how many issues used that component. And in some cases, we were able to just rename them. In some cases, we had to consolidate because they were uh, components we didn't need anymore. Uh, in some cases, um, there are, there were, there were, um, the component wasn't there at all, and we had to add it. And then we had to find out which tickets belong to that component, or vice versa. Um, again, this comes, comes through conversations with the teams. We have to find out what, com what components we need, what components we don't need. We can do the same thing with labels. Uh, and then, like I said, uh, let those conversations keep going. Let people talk about why we're doing this. And that will hopefully, it's never going to stop it completely, but it, it might minimize the proliferation of both labels and components and workflows. Um, so again, I have <coughs> some progress up here that I'm reporting. A couple other teams are just kind of starting the process. They haven't gotten there yet, but those conversations are ongoing. We talk about you know, when the meeting happens. Uh, we talk about, in, in that meeting, we talk about how it worked for the other team. Um, and then uh, you'll see in there, oh, of course I'm using this in a collapsible way so we can get rid of this. We have the list of target components. Um, we have uh, a team that doesn't use these yet, but we'd like them to. Uh, we have a team that is using them. Um, and in this case, I use this as a, as a way to discuss what was on continuous delivery or not, because uh, we wanted to move people to continuous delivery. So if that component of that, that, that team was using continu continuous delivery, this was a great way to get those conversations going. Um, how, how is that component, how is that part of the tech stack ha being handled through continuous delivery? And it helped us to step through each of the teams using continuous delivery or not. There might be some other process where in, that can benefit from this that you could have in that column. Uh, so yeah, you can see that they're, they're both, they both look the same because we haven't made any changes. These teams aren't ready to go yet. Uh, the conversations are just at their uh, beginning stages. Uh, yeah, and then I guess that's all I have for this, this presentation. Are there any questions? Mm -hmm. How big is the team or how many teams do you have? That at Rosetta Stone? So in the, in the product realm, we're looking at about um, 15 different teams, um, 20 if you de depending on how you include people, uh, but not everyone is using JIRA and not everyone's using JIRA projects. Um, sometimes they are using Kanban, they're not even using Scrum, um, but I'll still talk with the other teams to say, hey, I did this with X, Y, and Z team, et cetera, uh, because they might eventually use it. Um, but uh, sorry, it was, there's about 15 teams. What was the other question? How many people on, on the teams? Um, they, the teams range from a team of two, uh, for DevOps, for instance, uh, to uh, my team is roughly 20, 20 ish, um, and that's devs and QA. Yeah. So, how do you know those termites aren't having meetings? Um, <laughs> so, you started off by you know, saying that uh, I gather you've opened it up where people can do their own thing. Have you had a, like a major disaster where something's really been screwed up? No, it's really just um, the, the minor annoyances of being pinged by people all the time that need something to be fixed because a project wasn't set up uh, in a standard way. Um, and again, I want to keep it open. It's, it's, it, we're benefiting from the openness. Like, if Wikipedia wasn't open, it, you wouldn't have Wikipedia anymore, you know? Uh, we, want, we want people to, to, to explore and, and build, build in, in JIRA what works for them, but providing guidance will hopefully result in a better um, JIRA maintenance schedule, for instance. Yes? So a lot of what you talked about, like at the end, where you do the pruning and stuff like that, yeah. it seems like, um, yeah, you need to get all these all the teams together and like compare notes and stuff. Sure. Why do people want to do that, as opposed to staying in their own little bubbles? Mm -hmm. and, you know what I mean? Yeah, how do you, how so, do? Yeah, what did you do to kind of like, catalyze that to happen? Was it by we, edict? Is there a cultural thing where people felt like, oh, it's in everyone's enlightened self-interest to actually compare notes? Different yeah. people had different reactions, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, yeah. some, some people really wanted to maintain it the way it was, uh, and sometimes it was very easy to just pull up a, a label that has a typo in it, or a component that has a typo, and say, do we really need this one? You know, and, and you'll find that there are probably components and labels in there that have zero tickets associated with them. It's just a, a random you know, idea that someone had at one time that, but never got used. Um, you can also, uh, so if you illustrate those uh, examples, um, people will say, oh, okay, yeah, there are at least these 
outliers that nobody's using, so we can delete those, and that's, get, that, that's pretty easy to get some agreement on. Um, but then you can show them a label that has um, just one ticket on there. Why do we need a, a label or a component for only one ticket when it could possibly fall in another, another category? If they can make a good case for it, I'm not going to delete it. You know, it's up to them. But I, I feel like if, if we allow them the chance to think through what's happening, think, think through, you know, how, how, how is this proliferation happening? Why is it happening? Does, does it need to continue? Or can we consolidate? Just, just posing those questions, you get a lot of really good debate. Because I don't want to be too prescriptive about this. I'm not trying to just shut people down. I want to hear their ideas. Yeah, because I'm like, I like physics. And you know, one of the rules is entropy always expands. Mm -hmm. okay. That's right. And so you're, you're bucking Mother Nature. Sure. And you know, any, administ any juror administrator is doing the same. <laughs> Yes. One thing is, if you're in an environment where teams need to work together, though, you can maybe use that to your advantage. Yeah. Because you know, then you've got three teams who are trying to talk to each other. You can't even compare notes. That's right. Yeah. What can we do about it? And uh, a lot of people um, that that uh, might be entering those don't even think about reporting. But once you start pulling up reports and and show them what happens with these tickets, and people might, didn't even realize that that Jira was being used that way, that some administrator can. Just go in there and look at what's happening with the tickets. The dreaded wall of shame. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, the best thing there is, you know, you're talking about tickets. You're not talking about people. You're talking yeah, about I, processes. I you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I found that they use a lot of the JIRA queries mm -hmm. on the JIRA side, but on the Confluence side, mm -hmm. you need to do something for that. I, I had to make start making comments that had properties and had have uh, labels predefined. Yep. So, you, you mean you, you're, you're talking about labels and uh, well, the question I guess would be: Are your Jira and Confluence instances integrated? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what was what was blocking so you? The idea is, is that uh, if I want to if I want to index Confluence, the, the use of the blueprints to add in properties ah. that I can use as as indexes and labels that I can. Yeah, the, they definitely function differently in Confluence and Jira. I'm, I'm speaking mainly here about Jira tickets, uh, but I, I, I guess you could apply this to, for instance, abandoned pages in Confluence, but that would be another. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying that was, that was like a, 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 the main reason you might want to try this thing for Confluence. Um, you know, you have an, influence, uh, an, an instance of Confluence that has 100,000 pages in there, then only 10,000 of them are being used or whatever. Um, but. The, the, to answer your question, um, I haven't had that problem because we haven't tried this with Confluence. Yeah. So are you standardizing the components across projects or just trying to rationalize the components within each project? So the project is something that we had to talk about with each team to help them understand what a project is and why and when you might need a new project. And what we found was that people thought they needed a new project just because they had a new team. And in Scaled Agile, you definitely don't need that. Um, we wanted, it, it was, it, it helped everybody to consolidate. Um, but um, within a project, uh, yes, we had to standardize within a project to even think about merging to a larger project. Because without doing that, you're going to you know, lose some tickets that, that won't have that metadata anymore. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank